was Jeff Myers, a pianist, and he did a wonderful job. Thank you, Jeff. Let me welcome you to Etiwanda Community College. I can see some of you on the front row here, but as we get to the back there, all I can see is bright eyes and smiling faces. But it is a very special occasion, and thank you for being here. Etiwanda Community College, and to the special evening of celebration honoring our academic excellence across the curriculum. And then this a wonderful looking bunch of young men and young women. Tonight's honorees has invested significant time, dedication, and hard work and perseverance in achieving student success, which has accumulated their selection as top scholars at Itawamba Community College for 2014. And special appreciation is extended to the families of those who are being recognized for their support, their, your encouragement, commitment, which has contributed to, to the significance of their success of our honorees. We at Itawamba Community College are proud to share your pride and your accomplishments. And we know that when you leave here that you will walk with a swagger for the rest of your life. <laughs> Following the ceremony tonight, we invite you to attend a reception of light refreshments, which is sponsored by Phi Theta Kappa. And we'll provide an opportunity. It'll provide an opportunity for us to visit and to get better acquainted. Again, congratulations to our honorees upon your outstanding achievement. And we at Itawamba Community College appreciate the opportunity to contribute to your academic success. Congratulations. This evening we are celebrating academic excellence across the curriculum at Itawamba Community College. From the beginning of the college in 1948 to the current semester of 2015, ICC has provided outstanding educational opportunities, supported by exceptionally qualified and committed faculty, state-of-the-art facilities, and a variety of challenging majors and programs of study. This ceremony recognizes the academic achievement of our students and Itawama Community College's commitment to academic excellence. I know several of these students, and they truly represent the excellence that this college strives to help them achieve. Their hard work and dedication have led them here tonight and will continue to lead them through all of their following endeavors. It is a privilege for us, their faculty, advisors, and administration to be able to honor them tonight. And now Mr. Eaton will introduce our guest speaker. Thank you, Anna Britt. This is a, uh, a special uh, uh, privilege for me to introduce our guest tonight. Because I have known Lou Rimmers for 30 years, and he is a dear friend. He is a very quiet, unassuming man. He is a giver. He is an angel among us. He has led an extraordinary life, which you, I hope that you will share some of that. I first met Mr. Rimmers, I call him Lou, in 1985, uh, when I was the football coach at Itawama Community College, and he shows up uh, wanting to help us at the college, uh, we had no equipment. We didn't have uh, trainers. We didn't have anything. Uh, and he would come to the games. He would take care of our players. He donated his own equipment. He donated his own time. We would get on these buses and we would travel to all the way across the state. And you would eat that cold fried chicken coming back in and get it back two or three o'clock in the morning. Uh, and he led what I call the Juco Life Pack that thing. He did it on his own initiative because he saw a need at the community college to assist and to help. He never received one dime for this. He just received, as I said, a lot of cold chicken to eat on the way back. Uh, one of the things that uh, we I found out about him, he's never told me this, and then we got to talking. Uh, he loves to say, uh, and being a, uh, I don't really know how old he was, but he and a couple of friends took a 3,000 mile trip uh, with a couple of companions there from Spain to St. Thomas in which it took 25 days. Uh, and they encountered some very uh, uh, threatening storms. Uh, and from what I gather, uh, when he got off the boat, he had a hard time walking on land because he'd been on the boat so long. He was unshaven, uh, but he immediately found a uh, village there 
and one and bought him one earring and put in his ear because he said pirates only wear one earring. <laughs> Lou um, trained in the late 60s to join the Seabees. Um, it was known as a construction battalion, and here's just another example of how he is given. He went to Vietnam, he built roads, schools, hospitals, drainage systems, and water for purification. Uh, I was speaking, we were talking out front uh, just a little while ago, and he is getting ready to take a missionary trip to Haiti to there to give again, back to, back to, uh, to serve people. He also volunteered to be a trained, trained as a Navy diver. Now there was 300 that they screened to be a Navy diver. Selected 18, and only four of them made it. And he was one of those. He began his writing 20 years ago, and so true to Lou Rivers, his first uh, book, Reflections on Mur Murky Water, uh, my Vietnam Chronicle, uh, Chronicle uh, became a fundraiser to build a 60% replica of the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Wall, wall at Veterans Park in Tupelo. This is just another example of an angel among us, a giver, and somebody that's, that's very special uh, to, to me and to all that know him out there. Would you join me in welcoming Mr. Lou Reynolds? <laughs> appreciate it. Uh, I'm honored and humbled uh, to be uh, chosen to speak here this evening. Uh, I was on my way to uh, uh, the coast, Brian, to go visit a former classmate, and uh, President Eaton called me and asked me uh, would I speak, um, and he told me it was for students with uh, academic excellence, and that really kind of concerned me because I really, uh, when I got out of high school, uh, I, I realized when I graduated that there was an academic component to the high school. That was, that was, uh, that was news to me. Um, so um, I, I'd like to ask, I'd like to congratulate you, first of all, uh, on, your, on your achievements. Uh, are there any mathematicians in here? People that are really good in, in math? None? <laughs> My kind of people. <laughs> what are you excellent in? Public speaking. <laughs> no mathematicians. How about musicians? Okay. You play the piano? When you, drums. Does it come easy for you? You think so? It's almost natural. It's almost like a gift. To you. It's, it's obviously a gift because you pursued it, you knew you were interested in it, and you're working on it. Okay. Um, I, I have a I have a almost simplistic way of looking at some of these things, um, why we're drawn to certain things, um, and and I and I I think of the ancient idea, and it's thousands of years old. And is it are we human beings having spiritual experiences, or what, are we spiritual beings having a human experience? It sounds like it's the same thing, but it really is not. It's a little different. And my life experience has told me that I believe we're spiritual beings and we're having a human experience. We are here to learn, we're here to grow, we're here to experience things that will change us. Um, and, and the way that this goes, and I was a spirit, I was up in spirit land, and uh, everything was great. You want a cheeseburger, you got a perfect cheeseburger. I mean, when it was cold, the sun came out and you got warm. If you needed rain, it was a gentle rain. Everything was perfect. And it kind of got boring. And being a restless spirit, I decided I'd put in a request to go ahead and, and come down here and have a human experience. And so I put in the request that I was summoned by the Creator. And he had a basket. And I must have been really good because my basket was gold. Okay? Pretty good. Actually, this basket was on my refrigerator, and I used to keep potatoes in it until they became a science project. <laughs> the heat made them sprout. And it... Anyway. And so the good Lord takes the basket, and you're 
Spirit goes before him and he reaches back over here and he puts something in your basket. He reaches over here and he puts something to make it way back up here. Puts a whole bunch of things in your basket and then he gives your spirit his basket and says, take it and go on down there, down here with us. Um, I've chosen parents' view and family members' view and so on and so forth. And let's see what you can do with what's in your basket. Some of the things that are in your basket are, are natural talents. It might be drumming, it might be music, it might be mathematics. I'm surprised we don't have that. I think there's a mathematician somewhere. You can't have this many people without somebody that's really good at math. And they're usually kind of shy anyway, so there's probably three or four of them in here, okay? In amongst all the good things that are in there, there's also a few things that are challenging, okay? Um, one of the good things that were, that were placed in my basket was uh, I, I meet people easily. Uh, they say I have a good personality and I have fun. That's, a, that's one of my positive attributes in the basket. Um, as, I, as I got into school and, and uh, started grade school, I had a great deal of difficulty. And I didn't realize until uh, many, many years later that one of those things in the basket was dyslexia. Does anybody know what dyslexia is? Right man. Okay. Very good. Oh, scholars. Excellent. <laughs> dyslexia, for those that might not know, you're hardwired within your brain where when you perceive something, you look at something, by the time you process it, it's, it's changed a little bit. And my dyslexia was with letters and numbers. I could not be a mathematician, okay, which is okay. okay. Um, when I would read as a youngster, I became extremely fatigued. And the reason I was fatigued is because I had to watch those words because in the middle of that word, those two letters would change. And I had to watch to make sure they didn't move. But sometimes they did. And it would change the word, which would change the sentence. And what I found myself doing is reading words. And when I got to the last end of the sentence, I remembered the last three words that I read and didn't know what the rest of it meant. So I had to go back and reread it, and I had to reread it, and I had to reread it until it finally sank in. So I was really challenged with that. The thing that was most challenging was the number thing. Uh, $3.49 became $3.94. And um, I was always asking for more change or didn't have enough money. Uh, so those kinds of things really became a, a problem for me. Um, it was devastating for me because my father was an engineer. He was a mechanical engineer that eventually became an aerospace engineer. My dad was a pretty brilliant fellow. In fact, one of the jobs that he did was he, he designed and built the attitude rockets for the lunar landers and some of the spacecraft that went to, uh, went to the moon. And what an attitude, it, it controls the pitch and yaw so that the spacecraft would come perpendicular to the surface it was trying to find so it wouldn't come down sideways. Uh, I always wanted to be like my dad, but Engineers use a lot of math. My grandfather was an engineer. I've got two brothers that are engineers. Both of them are electrical engineers. Uh, all my bridges are made upside down, and uh, everything that I would engineer doesn't work. Okay. But I found that what I could do with that, uh, my frustration got so high that I became a real good daydreamer in grammar school. And uh, I thought I was going to be an engineer because I spent a lot of time in corners. Uh, <laughs> because when you daydream, you come up with some really funny stuff, okay? And you get in trouble. So that was part of what happened. Um, in that process, I became very analytical. Uh, I started figuring out how things worked. I would see a machine uh, laying railroad tracks and I'd, I'd watch it and I could, I could determine what kinds of things were working in order to make that thing happen. Um, 
So as time went by, I could not be an engineer, so I was very frustrated. Uh, I had to work twice as hard as anybody else to absorb the information. Some of you are gifted, you have those gifts in here. But I'm going to tell you, somewhere along the line, you're going to find that something's going to be in your basket that's going to challenge you. And whatever that challenge is, it's going to be very difficult. And the more difficult it is, the more rewarding it will be when you conquer it. Uh, I became a physical therapist. Um, and I'm very good with my hands. And I'm exceedingly good with analytical stuff. When someone comes in with a particular problem, I just have a knack for figuring it out. I believe that that's a result of the fact that the dyslexia threw me off track on the mainstream. So I took my negative and I worked it and I worked it and I worked it until it became a positive. You too need to be able to do that. You need to be able to understand that whatever adversity you're going to come against or is going to be presented to you, it's your gift. And if you take that gift, and you step back, no matter how difficult it is, you step back and you analyze it. There's a silver lining in it. There's something that's going to be much, much more rewarding than the gift of like being able to automatically play drums or whoever the mathematicians are really good at mathematics. Um, it's part of the life process, and it's why we're here. Um, some of the old philosophers and scholars would say, What's the meaning of life? Well, this is a simplistic way of looking at that. We're here for experiences, and the more experiences you have, the better it is. Uh, the more difficult it is in going through an experience if you approach it the proper way and, and look for that silver lining. When you get to the other side, it will be very, very rewarding, and you'll be, you'll be a much better person for it. Anybody have any questions? <laughs> These are really smart folks. No questions. All right, now, really, who's the mathematician? Well, ah, there she is, right? All right. Okay. All right, thank you very much. to the group that's sitting on the stage, and that would be the faculty at ICC and the staff. Would the faculty and staff please stand so we can recognize you? <laughs> at this time, the Career Technical Division wishes to recognize the following program award honorees. The students will stand as their names are piled. And audience, please hold your applause until this group is, has all been recognized and then we'll give them a, a, a rousing round of applause. Our first honoree is Marcus Walker, Automotive Technology. Mr. Walker is an Automotive Technology major from Hamilton. His parents are Connie Trimble and Mark Walker. Is Angela Ard. Business and Marketing Management Technology. Ms. Art is a Business and Marketing Management Technology major from Smithville. Her parent is Marilyn Smith. Kyle Sapp, Collision Repair Technology Award. Mr. Sapp is a Collision Repair Technology major from Tupelo. His parents are Stephen and Michelle Sapp. Braxton Eaton is our honoree for Computer Networking Technology. Mr. Eaton is a Computer ne Networking Technology major from Tupelo. His parents are Connie Rainey and Timothy Eaton. John Johnson is our Computer Networking Technology Award winner. Mr. Johnson is a Computer Networking Technology major from Fulton. His spouse is Jana Johnson. Duncan Shelton is a Computer Programming Technology Award winner. 
Mr. Shelton is a computer programming technology major from Ripley. His parents are Jeff Shelton and Brenda Shelton. <coughs> Andrew Green is our diesel equipment technology award winner. He's a diesel equipment technology major from Laurel. His parent is James Smith. Thank you. Jordan Corwild, early childhood education technology. Ms. Corwild is an early childhood education technology major from Baxter. Her parents are Jeremy and Sandra Corwild. Thank you. Dan Turner is our electrical technology award winner. He's an electrical technology major from Tupelo, and his spouse is Lindsay Turner. Justin Levy is our Forestry Technology Award winner. He's a Forestry Technology major from Smithville. His spouse is Courtney Levy. Nathan Wilburn is our Heating and Air Conditioning Technology uh, Award winner. Mr. Wilburn is a Heating and Air Conditioning Technology major from Manhattan. His parents are Danny and Sandra Wilburn. Jonathan Luke Renfro. Industrial Maintenance Technology. Mr. Renfro is an Industrial Maintenance Technology major from Amory, and his parents are John and Vicki Renfro. Christina Danielle Hoy, Interpreter Training Technology. She's an Interpreter Training Technology major from Tupelo, and her spouse is Kevin Hoy. Sam Barra, Law Enforcement Technology. Mr. Farrah is a law enforcement technology major from Saltillo, and his parents are Tommy and Kathy Farrah. Sonia Homeward, Office Systems Technology. Ms. Homeward is a Office Systems Technology major from Pontiac, and her spouse is James Homeward. <coughs> Danny Deal, Paralegal Technology. Mr. Deal is a Paralegal Technology major from Louisville. His parent is Linda Starr. Corey Brown is our award winner for Precision Manufacturing and Machining Technology. Mr. Brown is from Huffle, and his parents are Mary White and Arnie Brown. Dustin Poss, Welding and Cutting Technology. Mr. Poss is a Welding and Cutting Technology major from Aberdeen, and his parent is Brian Poss. Now, I think we can all Join together and congratulate this group of time to um, uh, the Health Science Division. I, I wish to recognize the following program award honorees. And will the following students uh, please stand and be recognized uh, as your name is called. Michael Adams. Mr. Adams is an associate's degree nursing major from Belmont, Mississippi, and his spouse is Wendy Adams. Amanda Armas. Sarmas is an associate degree nursing major from Guntown, Mississippi, and his, her spouse is Omar Armas. William Schenkel. Mr. Schenkel is a paramedic technology major from Calhoun City, Mississippi. And tonight, uh, she couldn't be with us, but I will go ahead and recognize Jennifer Leslie uh, from Health Information Technology. Um, uh, she has a sick child and was unable to join us tonight. Cynthia Davis. Ms. Davis is an occupational uh, therapy assistant major from Dumas, Mississippi, and her spouse is James Davis. Connie Foles.
Ms. Folks is uh, also an occupational assistant uh, uh, major from Amory, Mississippi, and her spouse is James Folks. Christy Blair Permitter. She's a physical therapist assistant major from Hamilton, Mississippi. Her parents are Robert and Barbara Blair, and her spouse is Bradley Permitter. Allie Evans. Ms. Evans is a radiological technology major from Columbus, Mississippi, and her spouse is Ray Evans. Delinda Patterson. Ms. Patterson is a respiratory care technology major from Nettleton, Mississippi, and her parents are Susan Baker and William Patterson. And then finally, Alexandria Shea. She is a surgical technology major from Starkville, Mississippi, and her spouse is Demarcus Mosley. Please join me in congratulating the Health Science Program. <laughs> Our next presenter is Mr. Joe Williams, Division Chair for Business Administration. The business division takes great pleasure in recognizing the department recipient and the overall division recipient. The Department of Econ Economics recognizes Kimberly Andrea Brennan. Kimberly, would you please stand? Kimberly is an accounting major from Houston, has a 4.8 point average. Her parents are Larry and Keisha Nims. The overall division award goes to Mary Chandler Isard. Mary is a daughter of Philip and Angie Isard from Fulton. She's an accounting major with a four point grade from average. She is an officer of the Student Government Association and a member of Phi Theta Kappa. She plans to continue her degree in accounting at Old Miss. Mary, congratulations. Please join me in offering congratulations. <laughs> Dr. Ken Bishop will present the awards for the communication. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Communication Division <coughs> wishes to recognize the following departmental members. In the area of English, Mallory Mahon. Mallory is an English major from Blue Springs. Her parents are Rebecca and Wayne Mahon. In the area of modern uh, foreign language, the Division of One wishes to recognize Megan Ked Kiesler as the honoree. She is a general studies major from Columbus. Her mother is Dodie Kiesler and father of the late Michael Kiesler. Third area is journalism. The division wishes to recognize Shayla Beaton. Shayla is a physical therapy major from Tremont. Her parents are Carrie and Greta Beaton. To be considered for the overall Communications Division Award, you must have taken classes in at least two of the following, English, Journalism, and Modern Foreign Language. The Division wishes to recognize Carly Kimbrell as an honoree. Carly is the daughter of Susan Welch. She's an English major from Pontotoc and will take her 4.0 GPA to a university of her choice, where she will pursue her PhD in English. Carly. Please join me in honoring these communications. <laughs> Our next presenter is Mr. Lawrence Tull from Computer Science.
Tracks Division wishes to recognize the following departmental award honorees. Carter Porter. Computer Science Division wishes to recognize Carter Porter as the Computer Information Systems Departmental winner. He is a Computer Information Systems major from Olive Branch. His father is Carl Porter and his mother is Tina Davis. Kim Crone, will you please The Computer Science Division wishes to recognize Kim Crone as the Computer Science Departmental honoree. He's a Computer Science major from Planner School. His parents are Kenneth and Michelle Crone. At this time, the Computer Science Division wishes to recognize the following division winner, Justin Barrow. Justin uh, is the son of Harold and Marilyn Barrow. He is a computer engineering major from Golden and will be transferring to to Mississippi State University in the fall with a 4.0 GPA. Please join me in recognizing Justin Barrow as our division, Computer Science Division Awardee. <laughs> our next presenter is Dr. Cass Patrick with the Fine Arts Division. Also a member of Phi Theta Kappa and included on the President's list. In theater, Danica Stevens. Danica is the daughter of Sandy Stevens of Oakland, has a 4 GPA, and is on the President's list. In speech, Austin Fields. Austin is the son of Coy and Kimberly of rural Mississippi. Ford is a pharmacy major, a 4.0 GPA, a member of Phi Theta Kappa, as well as being included on the President's list. Our final honor here is receiving two distinctions. The first is in music, Koshan Shepard. Koshan is the son of James and Sheena Shepard of Tennessee, Mississippi. Koshan is a music ed major. 3.6 GPA, is a member of Phi Theta Kappa, and is on the Dean's List. Question is also the Fine Arts Division honoree for this year. Question has been a member of the ICC All American Marching Band, the Top Wind Ensemble, Jazz Band, and Pet Band. He'll graduate this spring and transfer to Ole Miss this fall, where he's already been granted Community College Transfer Scholarship, Ole Miss Band Scholarship. As well as five fifth capital show. Please join me in congratulating all of these honorees from the final station. Our next presenter is Dan Hill, the chair of the Health, Physical Education, and Recreation Commission. Thank you, Dr. Patrick. At this time, the Health, Physical Education, and Recreation Division wishes to uh, recognize Lakin Shankel. She is the HPR Departmental Honoree. She is an exercise science major with a 4.0 GPA. She's also a member of our Lady Indian softball team. She is from Bruce and her parents are Dave Shankel and JoLynn and Rob Clanton. The HPR Division Honoree wishes to recognize D. Gates. He is our uh, HPR Division Honoree. He is the son of Dennis and Tawasla Gates. He is an athletic training major with a 3.2 GPA. He is from Baldwin, and he is one of our leading stars on our men's basketball team. We 
Would you please uh, clap for our HBR division? <laughs> our next presenter is Mr. Jeff Bates with the Mathematics Division. At this time, the Mathematics Division wishes to recognize uh, the following two students as our departmental award honorees. Tyler Fields. Tyler is a civil engineering major from South Hilla. His parents are Jeff and Pam Fields. Sam Ivey. Sam is an engineering major from Pontotoc, and his parents are Benjamin and Jennifer Ivey. Mathematics Division would also like to rec recognize Mr. Garrett Troutman as our division honoree. Garrett is the son of Tim and Shannon Troutman. He is a mechanical engineering major from Amory, and he will be transferring in the fall with a 4.0 GPA. Please join me in congratulations. <laughs> Our next presenter is Mr. Ray Chair with the Natural Science Division. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Bates. At this time, the Natural Science Division wishes to recognize the following departmental award honorees. Kenneth Pate Bishop, Biology. Kenneth is from Amory, and his mother is Leanne Bishop. Emmett Dending, Chemistry Department. Emmett is from Houston, Mississippi, and his parents are Gary and Tammy Dending. Michael Sean, Physics Department. Michael is from Blue Springs, Mississippi, and his parents are Steve and Yone Chun. This year, the Natural Science Division um, had two co-division honorees. Um, we just couldn't decide which one we wanted, so we picked them both. Um, we'd like to recognize Cole Stevens as our co-division honoree. Cole is the son of Craig and Shay Stevens. He is a biochemistry major from Mantachi and will be transferring to the University of Mississippi in the fall with 4.0 grade point average. The Natural Science Division also wishes to recognize Kelton Kingley as our co-division honoree. Kelton is the son of Terry and Sherry Kingsley. He is a biochemistry major from Morble and will be transferring to the University of Mississippi in the fall of the 4.0 grade point average. Join me congratulating our honorees. Thank you. 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 Thank she is from Amory, Mississippi. Her parents are Kenny and Stephanie. The history of the to Alex K. Sautersman. He's from Tupelo, Mississippi. His mother is Carolyn Sautersman. And his father and stepmom is Ken and Donna Sautersman. The Psychology Award goes to Hannah Grace James of Ball, Mississippi. Her parents are Michael and Sheila. The Science Award goes to Sanford Townsend of Norfolk, Mississippi. Her parents are Herbert and Marshall Townsend. The Sociology Social Work Award goes to Alex Linden of Lewis, Mississippi. Her parents are Gary and Paula Linden. The overall 
Federal Social Science Division Award goes to a person who has had a majority of the social science courses in psychology, sociology, criminal justice, uh, that's usually the major of that, histories, and we'll be here the rest of the evening. My name is Ray Stein. Goes to Jacob Hollis, a pupil of Mississippi. He is a secondary education history major. He has a 4.0 GPA. His parents are Toby and Mary Hollis. His hobbies are playing the guitar and martial arts where he holds the third degree in Black Belt. His goals, uh, Jacob stated, I plan on attending the University of Mississippi or Ole Miss for his bachelor's degree and eventually obtaining his master's degree at Vanguard.
I want to say congratulations to you. It's time, uh, this is a great time for the college. Stop, salute, and tell you how proud that we are of like, you. That you have a bright future right there. And I know all the relatives, parents, grandparents, husbands, wives, uh, aunts, uncles out there. I know how proud you must be. So it's a great day for you. Let me say again, it's a great day for everyone at Community College to send our alumni out in the world to do great things. Um, I would like to express my sincere appreciation to Anna Brick, Anna Brick Begno and the Honors Council for all the hard work that they do in putting this on and organizing it because this events like this just, just doesn't happen. Remember, we have a reception in the Fine Arts Gallery. We hope that you'll stick around and get some light refreshments there and maybe that will give us an opportunity to visit with you. So again, let me say thank you for being here and good evening.